With face melting altcoin pumps becoming just another day in the market and Bitcoin hitting new highs, the time for disciplined investment and trading strategy becomes more important than ever. This is the time to not get lazy, to not get greedy and stick to the trading plan that we've built together. Long-term viewers of the show have reaped the reward of strategic trading and have capitalized heavily on the movements from this week. And now is the time to be more vigilant than ever as we work to secure the 80% open ROI we've amassed this week. Meanwhile, a bombshell was just dropped by the SEC that could completely change the cryptocurrency markets. Stay tuned for today's episode. Welcome to Breaking Bitcoin, recorded live Thursday. Excuse me, it's Friday, isn't it? It is Friday, February 7th, 2020. This is your daily source for market updates, sentiment, and news for traders. I hope everyone watching today on YouTube, Twitch, DLive, Facebook Live, and on Roku is doing fantastic. Make sure to support the show by subscribing and hitting the like button for the YouTube algorithm. If you have any questions, please drop them in the live chat. The moderators will direct my attention to them in the Q&A section. Make sure, if you guys have not already, to go check out the premium Discord tutorial. If you want a preview of what the signal delivery system looks like or what it's like to navigate the premium Discord, or if you just want a guide to utilizing Discord usefully, please check out the premium tutorial that our our lead moderator Jack posted here on YouTube uh, two nights ago. Now we are still giving away a free t-shirt in this week's giveaway. Make sure to go to crackingcryptocurrency.com forward slash giveaway for your chance to win. Next week we are going to be giving away I do believe, one month of free access to the Premium Trading Group to one lucky winner. Make sure to come join us for movie night tomorrow as we watch Contagion. So grab your bottled water, your MREs, and prepare for the corona apocalypse and join us for a roundtable discussion on life, the universe, and everything. On the website, the Frequently Asked Questions page is live. It answers many of your premium group questions, trading and investment related questions, Discord questions, and other questions. So definitely make sure to go check that out. With that being said, I want to thank all of you guys for being with me here today. Fantastic day in the market. So let's hop right into the live scene and break down today's price action. Just wanted to point out the frequently asked questions page right here. I have made an addition to the show. We'll be doing this from now on. If you direct your attention here, here, there it is. Uh, we do have our open trades right there. Uh, this is somewhat what the signal delivery tracking looks like for current premium subscribers, but just allowing you guys a window into our performance as we continue to trade. Now, currently, these are just my trades. We'll aggregate the trades from the other senior analysts into our group results as well moving forward. Again, publishing all our results live at results.crackingcryptocurrency.com, the only group that does that. All right. Roll call, ladies and gentlemen. How are we all doing today? I see Jack Brown, Midwest Attempts, Crypto Jack, It's Hard, David Rice, Darren Garish asks, anyone else catching these 40% gains on alts this week? <sighs> you and me, my friend. Uh, that is a, that's a bot in my chat. <laughs> Roll it up, bowl it up. Mobius378, good to see you, my friend. All right, web dev newbie says uh, she was clearly flirting with him. Yeah, yes, I'm going to say that that's that's what it is. Dubatat Ebrius, thank you so much for the generous tip there, my friend. Highly appreciated. Not when she's on Wi-Fi, though. Uh, thank you so much for liking the music, guys. Uh, Anton Libre asking a great, great question about cash and that. I'll cover that in the Q&A, my friend. Uh, typically, uh, going to use something like Coinbase. Uh, Ricky Thompson, Gravy Grits and Greens, so happy to see you, my friend. Mr. Unicorn, Joe 2501, Sanic Fest and Roy Coin back on track as always. So here on the website, uh, I want to thank uh, our lead developer, Ben, for getting this up. 
Uh, fan, he did a fantastic job on this. If you go to the website and go to the resources tab right here, you can hit the frequently asked questions. And then there's also the terms glossary. If there are ever any terms that we use on the show or in the group or on the website that you don't understand, such as hedging, leverage, margin, going long, options, contracts, uh, time to time to maturation when we're talking about options, uh, you know, in the money, out of the money, all, all things like this, uh, those are all going to be answered in the glossary. And then the frequently asked questions page, uh, there's questions about the premium trading group, uh, questions for premium members, uh, questions about the Google Drive, trading view related questions, Discord and trading related questions. And really, even for people who aren't in the group, this is a great resource right here uh, as far as, you know, is it legal for Americans to trade on Bybit or BitMEX? Segregating investment capital from trading capital. How can I short Bitcoin? What is hedging my position with a short futures contract mean? Why am I losing dollars if I'm hedged? Uh, what does risk percentage mean? Um, uh, how does uh, FTX margin work? Is Bitcoin dominance market cap relevant? Does Bitcoin being bearish affect my altcoin trades? How does my dollar amount relate to altcoin Bitcoin pair trades? So I want to thank the team for compiling uh, the answers to these questions that we do receive commonly in the group from new traders or new investors or even experienced traders and investors. And we've published those answers here. And let me tell you, it. oh, I know why it's hot because my coffee's down there. It is hot in this room. I got like nine computers firing right now. All right. F1, did I buy another Rolex? Ah, you know it, baby. No, guys, listen, I am a, I'm a financial minimalist. I'm a financial minimalist. So I've had this watch for a while. It was a gift from a friend. Uh, I tend to enjoy uh, if I receive, you know, when, when I receive or realize profits, I cover my cost of living um, and I tend to invest. I think that's a big reason for my success is over the last 10 years, I have reduced my expenses. I have gotten very disciplined on things like going out, you know, I live very clean. I don't go out and drink. I don't go out and party. Um, I enjoy genuine, really good times with my friends and family. And that stuff doesn't cost money. And I take all of my excess capital and I put it into the market. I put it into dividend stocks. I put it into commodities. I put it into index funds. I put it into cryptocurrency. I put it into real estate and I allow all of my money to grow to work for me. And if you can do that for 10 to 20 years, you can retire very, very early. It does get crazy hot in your Midwest. Let me tell you, my friend. All right. So into today's show, I want to cover a lot of stuff. We've got some interesting developments coming on in Bitcoin. Here we are on the daily time frame as we are wont to do again over here on Bybit price currently trading at 97.8050 and price looking a little lazy, looking a little weak this morning. Uh, we did reach up and sweep the previous high of yesterday, although it's interesting that the price action on BitMEX and Bybit are slightly different. Of course, Bybit becoming more uh, coming more quickly and more quickly popular uh, among traders because of its ease because of its because of the fact that you can actually hold different margins and the fact that you can move into usdt of course uh in the in the exchange that we trade on but having that being said rolexes are great investments they almost always appreciate i'll have to think about that maybe maybe get me a roly and give me another roly all right uh <laughs> so uh, anyways, on the daily time frame, things look fairly good. Again, we did get that recross back over of Minx. That's going to be our momentum oscillator yesterday. Uh, so overall, price looks healthy. We are not in the overbought area. The only thing, again, that could concern me right now is going to be the potential bearish divergence coming in from Minx. Of course, if we do end up forming this bearish div, we won't have confirmation of that, honestly, probably until it's slightly too late right here. But if we do top right here and then turn down, that is going to be confirmed bearish divergence. Now, again, as I talk talked about yesterday. And as I posted last night, I am looking to re-add to my position. And we'll see this when we go to the price action charts right around the 9440 area. I'd like to see that inefficiency in the market get filled. But, but rest assured, ladies and gentlemen, I think that Honestly, looking at the markets right now, uh, do I feel that, you know, things are kind of overheated and that we could see uh, a correction? Yes, absolutely. In fact, that would make sense at this point in time. So I think that you want to be protecting yourself. Again, all of our altcoin trades, all of the trades that you see right there, for example, have already had their first uh, several uh uh, targets hit. So the stop losses have moved to break even, if not aggressively, into profit, depending on your personal strategy, whatever strategy you propose, the multiple strategies that we teach in the group. So all of your, for, so for the majority, so for myself and for the traders in the group, uh, they are going to be in no loss situation. So the market could move down right now. They will not lose any money. They will just not make as much money as they would have liked. And hey, at a time, generally when the market tips and turns, that's going to be a time when individuals 
most traders are not arguing about how much money they didn't make. They're arguing about the fact that they lost money. So always very happy to be in that situation. So just make sure that you're protecting yourself. Uh, there's some amazing altcoin gains that are going on right now. And you're going to hear kind of two things from individuals. Uh, and I'm going to I'm going to very strongly stay on the one hand of this. A, you're going to hear individuals that are speaking from a place of silliness and greed that are saying, hey, uh, make sure you don't sell, don't lock in profits, man. You won't, you won't, you won't, you, 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 you won't believe what happened to me, you know, last alt season. Okay. That's all well and good. And I'm seeing this on, I, I saw this, this kind of comment that I want to comment on this on Twitter this morning. Uh, that's all well and good, but here's the, here's the reality. And this is how I deal with this. You have your investment bag. You have your investment portfolio, which you don't touch, which that you're looking to 10 X, 20 X, 30 X that in cryptocurrency. If you're not, I don't know why you're here. Uh, you know, just, just the other night, just the other night I moved, you know, I, I, I just the other night I acquired a small portfolio of altcoins and I moved that into cold storage and I'm not going to touch that. You know, that was my allocation for the month of January as January came to a close. That was my regular investment allocation. And I'm not going to touch that until it's worth 10 times what it's currently worth right now. Right. And when it's 10 X, I'm going to cash that out. I'm going to sell it completely. That's exactly what I want from that. I know exactly what I'm going to get in. It's money that I'm willing to lose completely because it's an investment and I know exactly what I'm going to get out, right? So it's a bundle of about 10 coins when the value of that bundle is 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 10 times its value. So when it 10 X's, I'm going to sell that bundle. I don't care where the individual coins are, right? Um, so that's one way to do it. And you can do this. It doesn't matter what your capital income is. It doesn't matter what kind of money that you're working with. We're talking about coins that we're talking about coins that can do, you know, you know, we're, ta we're talking about coins that can do 100x movements, guys. I don't know if you were here back in 2017, uh, 2000, early 2018. These things can absolutely happen. And especially if the news that we're going to be covering later on comes to pass, I think this could be a complete game changer uh, moving forward for the next two to three years in the altcoin market. So things are hot. Things are overheated. And or excuse me, things are hot, things are heating up and you want to make sure that you're positioning well. And I don't think that it's too late to position. I don't think that it's a bad time to be establishing positions, but you want to do it the appropriate way. You want to do it the intelligent way. You want to do it by taking if you so if you make a thousand dollars a month, OK, and if you have two hundred dollars to invest per month, OK, take that two hundred dollars buy uh buy an investment vehicle and in this case in this scenario i'm talking about buying 200 dollars worth of an altcoin put that on a ledger nano x and tell yourself note the dollar value of that investment and then say okay at this dollar value that gets sold no matter what right that's it or you can say at this dollar value half gets sold stop loss mental stop loss obviously because it's in cold storage gets moved to break even right you can write that down on a piece of paper a spreadsheet whatever you like and then we'll let the rest ride as long as it will possibly go with it that's you know, a year or six months or 10 years, who knows, right? Moving into a very, very exciting time in the markets overall. Uh, but that is completely different from trading. Remember why we trade. We trade so that we don't have to go punch a time clock, right? Or for those who want to trade a more passive, uh, a more passive strategy, like the one that we teach with Pathways to Profit, you guys want to earn extra income on the side for very little time expense, for very little time expense. And that's fine. But you have to understand that your trading capital and your trading returns are not going to see, uh, or, or excuse me, you, you cannot mix the philosophy of your investment portfolio with your trading portfolio. Your trading portfolio is simply there to attempt to outperform the market with that allocation of capital. And for me and for professional traders, it is there to be our active form of income that we use to have control over our currency. The nice thing about trading capital as opposed to investment capital is that it's quite liquid. It's quite liquid. It can move around. I can move it into whatever market that I want, and I can use it to protect myself and hedge against market instability uh, because I am exposed to multiple markets all the time. So it allows me more control. It allows me more freedom in that sense. Oh. So again, coming back to that, two things you're going to hear. Don't take profits. Let your trades run. Don't do that. If you want to make, if you want to watch something do 10 X or, or, or more, stick it in a ledger nano X and don't touch it. Okay. And then go back and trade with your capital, the normal way that we trade. That's what you want to do. That way you can get the best of both worlds. Second thing that you're going to hear is make sure to secure profits because you never know when the market's going to turn on you. And here's the thing. There's a difference between that and what we do. That is correct. When you apply both of these strategies, strategy a 
don't deny yourself the investment returns on altcoins with a buy and hold strategy or Bitcoin or Ethereum or the S&P 500. OK, don't deny yourself those returns. Build yourself an investment portfolio. This is what I do every single month with my trading profits. I pay my bills and then I allocate capital to investments and then I have money left over to spend as I want. Right. If I want to buy, you know, a new monitor or I want to buy some new equipment or I want to go on a trip or I want to go out or I want to go out to eat. That is how that is how I do things. That is how I manage. Pay yourself first. Right. Rules for financial success and the richest man in Babylon. Highly recommend you guys go read that book. And the most important wisdom and information you're going to get from that book is pay yourself first. Pay yourself first. And what that means is that after you get your check, invest first, pay your bills, and then whatever money you have left over, you can do something with, right? All right. So moving into the market. Sorry, guys. Nice little tangent there. Hopefully somebody timestamps that. Uh, nice little tangent there. Moving into the market today. As I said, Bitcoin trading at 97.80 above the baseline, coming in at 95.97, stretching down in channel to 94.60. Now, we are technically bullish above 94.11. We do need to close the daily below 94.11 to invalidate that. That's why I'm going to be looking for re-entries at a little bit lower price. When we look to the four hour, we can see some signs of some lagging out and some stalling out in Bitcoin. Again, I think that looking for altcoin opportunities at this point in time, rather than looking for short term shorting opportunities on Bitcoin, are going to be more profitable and your better bet. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, take that as you will. I think that highly aggressive people will be looking for a breakdown on Bitcoin. I can already see it on Twitter kind of coming from the same people that have kind of thrown themselves in front of this and thrown themselves in front of this and thrown themselves in front of this. And by that, I mean, trying to short this bullish market all the way up. And now they are finally starting to go long, which actually might not be a bad time to look for a short term uh, price movement to the downside could be a time for a correction. Uh, but again, the daily is not confirming that the daily is there to protect us. The daily is there to give us our nice passive swing trades. We've already had many, many profitable uh, swing trades from the daily over the course of this run to the upside. Uh, and it's always going to be at one point that that is going to be the incorrect trade and we move to the downside. Uh, so we'll be looking at that here shortly in just a minute. Uh, other things to uh, other things to note here again, uh, capital should be hedged tech. I mean, uh, technically, we're going to be aggressive here. Uh, the baseline says the capital should be hedged below 95. 500. And again, closing below 94.11 is going to be uh, a no trade zone. Actually, 93.04 is where we need to close the daily. And I'm going to hold to that very closely. Uh, getting down below 93.04, we'd be looking for a little bit more of a correction. Uh, but I do think that we will not likely see that. And again, as we pointed out with the weekly, and I understand that this number is going to be quite far away, uh, but looking at where our 200 simple moving average on the weekly is progressing to, I do not think that we are going to be seeing price below 5,400, which for those of you with a long time horizon, a long time horizon should be filling you with a lot of confidence that we are overall moving in the correct direction for those long returns, for those long positional long trades. Don Candon says, when I want to go on a trip, I pop a pill. Yeah, man, Imodium AD because you party too hard. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Unicorn. I appreciate it. I enjoyed making the tangent. Whew, man, I'm telling you, it is hot in here. All right. Um, other things to note on the daily, not so much. Uh, let's take a look at. Actually, there's really nothing else to take much of a look at. Uh, continued rising explosion level here on Wada Atar explosion. So overall volume and volatility is healthy on the daily perspective. Rising explosion level, price above the dead zone and still green water bars. Declining volume bar from yesterday, though. So two of these might be a little concerning. Again, Minx did give us that confirmed crossover yesterday. Still moving to the upside, still pointed up. The only thing that is potentially concerning here, which we have no confirmation on yet, would be potential bearish divergence coming in from Minx. Uh, so my recommendation is going to be this. If you're feeling twitchy, if you're feeling hairy, take a little bit of profit on your long trade, move your stop loss to break even. That way you protect yourself and then you look for the re a little bit lower, right? And we're going to go over those price levels right now. So over here on the four hour time frame, uh, the four hour is actually going to be signaling for a short term opportunity for a correction to the downside. Uh, what do we have here? We do have price stalling out at the high volume node, the area of current distribution, the area of current consolidation right here. Uh, <laughs> uh, Embate asking about Tezos. We'll take a look at that. Mr. Ether just wants to moon. Bitcoin, please go to moon. 
Uh, so uh, actually the four hour here on Bybit is gonna be signaling a potential for a short term opportunity for a short trade. Again, I think that you're gonna have more opportunity looking for bullish trades in a bullish market. Uh, so maybe shifting your focus to the altcoin sector. Again, uh, what I think is the proper opportunity, the proper move here is to take some profit, move your stop loss to break even, and then look to re-enter on a correction to the downside. And again, utilizing an indicator like Minx or utilizing an indicator like time transformation will help pinpoint those areas because remember, in bullish markets, we want to buy dips. So you have so many tools that we provide to you. For example, you have the baseline tool. You have the CC EMA script. If you're a non, if you're a non premium member, you guys can go access that script immediately. Uh, for premium members, you guys are going to have Minx. So remember, if Minx dips down below the zero line, it gives a crossover, and we're bullish on a more macro time frame. I mean, that is an oversold level. That is that is an entry signal. And again, many individuals who have tested that particular technical strategy perform quite well. So. Here on the four hour time frame, there's a couple things that are a little negative. Again, we have this kind of stalling out of price. As you guys can see here, we have swept the previous high right here with this wick and fully rejected. We have we are back right down in the median of the range. Uh, we are looking to attempt to close this four hour candle below the point of control on the daily. And we also have double sell signals coming in from time transformation on the four hour. And yes, we do have it confirmed now bearish divergence bearish divergence coming in from time transformation, right? Now in one more candle, actually the bearish div signal will print, right? And again, time transformation, very similar to Minx. We got these green dots of life, gave you the beautiful buy signal right here on this crossover, got you in for this, and then would have got you out right here at this candle, pretty much right at the top. So a beautiful signal coming in from uh, time transformation. Now also remember this, we've talked about this before, uh, oversold, is, or excuse me, overbought is typically not as successful for entering shorts or for exiting longs than trending signals to the downside, right? So again, Bitcoin is, is elevator up, stair steps down. It moves, it moves differently, it moves differently rather than normal assets. So those of you who wanna be a little bit more conservative could wait for this maneuver until either time transformation crosses below the zero line or similarly minx. And that is even if you are paying attention to this time frame. But I do just want to point that out. And I do see that this could have some follow through. Where does that lead us? Where is a likely area for re-addition at this point in time? Well, simply looking at the volume profile over here, we only really see one significant shallow area of the market. And that's going to be the area between 9,500 and 9,400 roughly, really 9,550 and 9,450. So I think that we tend to overshoot corrections a little bit. So I'm going to be targeting slightly below that level. And then you have some fantastic stop loss placement opportunities, whether you're utilizing VPVR, whether you're utilizing something like Quadrigo ATR and utilizing the proper average true range settings, or whether you are just simply watching price and waiting for that kind of signal and confirmation, whether you're using WADA or Minx or time transformation, uh, what have you. So uh, based on those metrics, if you were kind of looking for that short term opportunity, uh, then logic would dictate looking for a correction to this area right here. And we already have a high that is swept, which means that that previous high is valid as a stop loss, giving you about 3.47 risk to reward factor on that particular setup right there. Again, I don't think that this is probably the best and safest maneuver uh, for individuals. Uh, I don't want this to get individuals out of the mindset that we are bullish and you wanna be looking to add on dips. So I think the best scenario is again, just to protect yourself, uh, maybe not take advantage of this opportunity and simply re-add on that dip. I think the opportunity is gonna to be greater for the profit of this maneuver. I don't want I don't want people to get too overextended to the upside. And again, Bitcoin could continue to consolidate here and put in a nice strong bullish candle close breaking above resistance. And then what are we, what are we going to get? We're going to get another move of expansion to the upside. But what I think is likely to see here again, we can see it over here, movement to the upside consolidation dip down to fill this inefficiency in the market. We have this inefficiency in the market right here. We had a shallow area of the volume profile right here. You can see it right here. It's filled in a little bit uh, because we actually transacted some volume there. Uh, but we're looking at basically the exact same area here. We're looking at about the same area here. Just looking at the run up. Where's the shallow area? Where's the shallow node? Right there. That's where price wants to go. But from the weekly perspective as well, oh, uh, Eli back. Thank you so much for the five dollars, my brother. I want to remind you guys about the weekly perspective, though. Uh, maybe it's on, sorry, it's on Bitstamp, I do believe. 
I want to remind you guys about the weekly perspective as well. What are we waiting for on the weekly, right? And this is why I don't want you guys to get so caught up with these short-term price fluctuations. What are we watching for on the weekly? We're watching for that rising explosion level. Minx has quite a bit of ways to go until it reaches the overbought level. And remember, what did Minx do the previous overbought level? What Minx will do when it reaches the overbought level and we're in a true bull market, and it does this all the time on these macro timeframes, regardless of what momentum oscillator that you use, uh, it's going to coil. It's going to coil. It's going to coil. And what is the sign of the true exit that's going below the zero line? Again, the overbought signal doesn't matter what momentum oscillator you use, doesn't work as well. I'm developing one right now. So again, eventually I'll have a solution to this, a very good solution. Uh, but what we're what we're moving toward and working for right now is looking for that rising explosion level to really confirm this bullishness. Of course, my system, the breaking Bitcoin system, gave the long signal on the weekly time frame over here. And once we get that rising explosion level, I do believe it's going to be very similar to where we were right here. And we finally got that rising explosion level. And what did that lead to? led to quite a bullish expansive up movement. I don't think we've seen anything yet. Anything yet. With that being said, it's getting to be 1226. So let's take a look at the broader market here. They've got a little walkthrough now. Click the Bitcoin bubble. Are they training me? Change period to month. Visualize market capitalization. <laughs> Very nice crypto bubbles. Way to be a maxi. All right, so we'll look at performance on the daily. Uh, stacks up another 24.4%. Vested interest <laughs> vested interest in stacks. Go, baby, go. Uh, so let's go look at stacks. Stacks doing a fantastic job today on the daily. Uh, another consecutive move into the upside. And we're seeing this, honestly, a lot on these altcoins. So for example, uh, we can go take a look at a trade that we closed out today, uh, which is going to be win USDT. Uh, entered into win USDT. Uh, entered into win USDT. Uh, we ended up hitting uh, our our primary take profit on this, and then where when it came down right here, just just pr almost prior to the show, we went ahead and closed out. Took some profit up here right up here and went ahead and closed the trade out. So we're seeing this on a lot of these altcoins. So we'll wait to see what the daily looks like uh, because these could be leading indicators that we are going to be seeing a little bit of a pullback because it does seem like that we have gotten somewhat of a blow off top on a lot of these. Now, again, overall macro, still looking for dips to add. But again, I just want to caution people for throwing themselves at the tops, throwing themselves at the tops, right? And then we can look at something like Perlin, which we're in right now, uh, Perlin USDT. We entered this yesterday, uh, so we've gotten the major the bulk of this entire candle right here. We need to change the breaking Bitcoin indicator to 60, actually. I apologize here on the daily. So you guys can see the initial long signal coming in yesterday on Perlin. Took this to the long side. We've already hit TP1, and we haven't seen that sell-off yet. So we're going to see. I still think, again, I think that the opportunities are going to be in the altcoins moving forward instead of shorting Bitcoin uh, for those who have a low time preference. Uh, let's go look at Big Daddy uh, Ethereum over here. Ethereum looking stronger than Bitcoin. Uh, Ethereum continuing to move to the upside. The FBTC ratio looks actually quite healthy. Again, we would have gotten the confirmed recontinuation entry signal on this candle right here, actually. And then a regular momentum continuation signal here uh, on this candle right here. Either way, putting us in for some quite, quite, what's the word these kids use? Sick gains, I believe, is the word. Uh, Minx poking its head into the overbought territory for the first time. Since back in January, uh, the 15th of January on the daily over here. Uh, and when we did do that, we actually did see a little bit of a pump to the upside and then a short term correction. Uh, actually, the exit signal from the breaking Bitcoin indicator did a little bit better on that particular market cycle. Of course, never losing the bullish bias here on Ethereum. So again, uh, I think that profit taking looks like a fantastic idea here. And of course, continuing to re-add on dips back to the baseline. Or if you want to be a little bit more conservative here, a little bit more aggressive, uh, adding on dips back to the Back to the trending indicator right here. Uh, so again, looking kind of that area between 182 and 188. Uh, for being aggressive, for being conservative, you're looking for 191 to 197. XRP USD today. 
XRP USD, USD today, again, looking like some of the other altcoins as well, uh, experiencing a little bit of a pullback, uh, wicking the previous uh, high on today's, so putting in a new high and then rejecting from that. So very similar to Bitcoin, uh, very similar to Win USDT, very similar to a good number of other altcoins that we'd say. Uh, I would have totally bought some lame crypto. Hey, we've all done that, man. We've all done that. Um, again, XRP USD. I don't really have anything uh, to note here. One thing that is interesting is, again, XRP, very similar to Ethereum, actually. XRP reached the overbought level here on Minx and then put in two days of recorrection, has now crossed to the underside, which would be a regular exit signal on time transformation. Or again, that's going to be a take profit signal. So XRP, those who are along on XRP, I am going to recommend that at least half of profits be taken on their current swing trades and that that stop loss be aggressively moved up into a profit area, uh, looking for re-additions around 26.59 at this current point in time. Dips down would be more appropriate, although we are getting golden dot continue continuation, but in conjunction with the minx overbought and kind of pullback, which again, if we start looking, if we start looking at uh, the altcoins that are pulling back as kind of a leading signal for the market uh, with Bitcoin as well, kind of stalling out, what I think we're going to continue to see is about half the market continue to pump and about half the market begin to pull back, right? I mean, we've, we've moved up quite a bit, guys. We move up, we've moved up quite a bit. I think that they're going to have to put some, I think that we're going to see regulation come out a lot quicker if we just continue to pump right now, right? Let's just get a, maybe a nice little pullback uh, and then re-entries. Litecoin USD, my love, my one and only for Mr. Wayne Arndt. Let's take a look. Uh, Litecoin USD, again, look tracking very similar to Bitcoin right now. Uh, again, looking okay on the daily, but looking a little, I mean, looking okay on the daily, but also looking a little sluggish. Uh, again, going to be getting the continuation okay from the Golden Dot continuation system and the crossover from Minx. And I would hate for this to be uh, the, the one kind of bad signal that we get. Uh, overall, I think that Litecoin looks very good. I'm still very, very much long on Litecoin. You have to realize, though, that although I took the LTC USDT position and I earned, uh, what did I get, 6 16% off of that last trade that I took on Litecoin. I still have a very large chunk of Litecoin that is kind of in my, that's a positional trade. So again, I'm going to hold that until I get 100% on my return. Uh, again, Litecoin came down to its historical lows, which is where I purchased Litecoin. And it's put in, I believe, four times off of those levels, 100% to 200% corrections. And that's the movement that I'm looking for. Just making sure I didn't, I didn't hit, I didn't, I didn't hit the button. So you know, when it comes to Litecoin, the answer just needs to be, we won't sell until the top. All right. Now, uh, as far as LTC USD on the daily, though, a little bit of falling volume from Watatar explosion, although still a rising explosion level, although it has been going on for quite a while. Baseline is kind of tightening up and hugging it pretty closely. Uh, you know, I think the risk is worth the reward here to be aggressive on altcoins. Again, we have continuation valid down until 70.05. So if we were going to go for a long trade, current take profit zone would be. Current take profit zone from Quadrigo is going to be stretching from 78.32 to 87.37 with a hard stop at 67.02, but invalidation at 70.05. So if we get that invalidation at 70.05, we're going to get out at about half the loss that we normally would, and it would allow you to position for a regular trade uh, on this asset. It, it looks good to me. It doesn't look like the best entry right now. I think there's a lot of coins that are just kind of emerging above the baseline and starting to poke their heads out into bullish territory, and I think have a few days of pumping left in them. And again, keep in mind, it is is the weekend. Uh, it is the weekend. And today is Friday. Today is profit taking day, right? So keep that in mind. So there is a large part, part of this where we could just see a little bit of lazy pullback over the rest of Friday here. And then come Saturday, I think we could we could still see a big explosion of retail volume coming in. And then maybe that is what gets sold into come Sunday evening or Monday. But, you know, honestly, the, the market is bullish. So we have to assume that the market is going to continue moving up. Uh, you know, it, it never pays to bet against the market, which is why I said, even though it looks to me discretionarily, the Bitcoin is, is looking at a nice little uh, nice tasty correction right here, about a 4% correction, which is a fantastic trading opportunity. Don't short bull markets, guys. Don't short bull markets. Long dips. Long dips. You know, short corrections in bear markets. Long dips in bull markets. Which is, you know, 
I think there's some good confluence coming in. I think I think we might be setting up for a good altcoin continued breakout over the weekend. But you got to pick your coins wisely. You got to know what metrics to look for because I think we are going to see corrections in some of these coins that are a little overextended. Uh, and I think they're going to pull back and I think they're going to continue. But I think there's a good good chunk of coins out there that are just getting raring up. And I think today and over the weekend are going to be their weekend to pump. So we're going to be covering those obviously in the group. You guys know how to get access to that. Uh, and of course, we're going to be here come Monday and try to talk about that as much as possible, covering your requests moving later on as well. All right. With that being said, it is going to be 1235. I want to get into today's news because something came across our desk that really, I think, could fundamentally change the way um, that the cryptocurrency is viewed by American regulators. So let's get into today's crypto currently episode. All right, now a new regulatory proposal by the SEC has the ability to have a significant impact on the development and investment in cryptocurrency projects in the United States. And of course, Hester Pierce, crypto mom, she's the US Securities and Exchange Commissioner. She has presented a new proposal on how to regulate cryptocurrencies. Under her proposed policy, the way that US regulators evaluate blockchain-based digital assets as being financial securities could dramatically change. As of right now, only a small number of cryptocurrencies are exempt from U.S. securities laws, which is to say financial regulators do not classify Bitcoin or Ether, for example, as securities. And while most other projects, particularly tokens, which were offered as part of an ICO or initial coin offering, typically do fall under the category of security and run afoul of U.S. securities laws. One such example was the Telegram token offering, which we covered the SEC investigation into recently on this show. Now, while there have been a few exceptions to this rule, the SEC maintains that the risk is quite high that many projects and their initial coin offerings do qualify as securities and therefore are unapproved token sales. Now, this perilous regulatory scheme means investment and innovation in the crypto space is seriously stifled, and many existing projects could be the subject of future SEC investigation. However, under Hester Pierce's new safe haven proposal, companies issuing digital tokens would be granted some breathing room in order to establish their networks and communities before having to meet regulatory requirements later. And the SEC commissioner made her comment on Thursday while speaking at the International Blockchain Congress in Chicago. Pierce described how crypto firms should be allowed a three-year grace period from the launch of their first token offering in order to reach a certain level of decentralization of the project. And once the project gets off the ground and the threshold for decentralization is met, the project's tokens would no longer meet SEC criteria for being classified as securities under the federal securities law. Now, leaders within the crypto industry are applauding the commissioner's proposed approach to regulating crypto startups, commending a delicate approach which won't, which won't uh, get entrepreneurs abroad in search of friendlier jurisdictions to support their tech innovation. Now, Binance U.S. CEO Catherine Coley tweeted, if adopted, the proposed safe harbor could be the most groundbreaking development for the U.S. cryptocurrency market to date by putting development first and giving projects a runway to build robust networks. The proposed safe harbor puts an important stake in the ground towards supporting American access and acceptance of digital asset markets. In the long run, it will help bring more Americans into digital asset trading and foster greater network participation. Now, by adopting the proposal, regulators would acknowledge the realities of bringing a modern blockchain project to life as a decentralized network. It needs time, developers, users, use case, and steady adoption. Now, as the SEC commissioner described it, the analysis of whether a token is offered or sold as a security is not static and does not strictly inherit to the digital asset. So while some tokens and projects do, of course, have the characteristics of a security when they're first introduced, their nature is fluid. And as the network expands, their purpose evolves. Steve Kokinos, who is the CEO of Algorand, calls the idea an important step. The blockchain industry and regulators need to continue a healthy dialogue with the United States to truly become the global and responsible leader in blockchain innovation. Katie Biber from Anchorage 
which is an institutional grade cryptocurrency custodian, said that they urge the commission to move promptly to adopt this measure and to consider other innovative ways to increase investors' choices in the digital asset space. Now, if Pierce's proposal is accepted, then it could establish strict rules for crypto and blockchain projects debuting for commercial investment. Clear regulatory guidelines would be issued concerning the raising of capital via token sales, personal disclosure issuing requirements, source code disclosures, appropriate public announcements, as well as publicly listing and revealing the identities of the ICO team members. The goal of regulators would be to protect consumers while also fostering an environment suitable for innovation in the crypto space to take place. The proposal also includes clarification on the term network maturity, which is described as the point at which a project's digital tokens are no longer being controlled by a single entity. Quoting the document, the definition of network maturity for a cryptocurrency is intended to provide clarity as to when a token transaction should no longer be considered a security transaction, but as always, the analysis will require an evaluation of the particular facts and circumstances. The SEC commissioner affirmed that the success of the safe harbor proposal depends on token issuers participating in good faith and that it doesn't undermine the ability of regulators to carry out any necessary enforcement action against fraudulent ICOs or others involved in illegal activity. So we can look at, you know, we can look at massive projects, for example. EOS, for example, which is one of the probably biggest events that has happened, uh, its launch was highly controversial. Its launch was highly controversial and considered largely centralized um, when it launched on the Ethereum network. And then they were able to get their mainnet launched out. Now, some could argue about the centralization or decentralization of the EOS network, but essentially this provides current crypto projects a roadmap and the ability to develop. Um, so we can say that any such projects that launched in 2018, although I think that many of them will be considered failed projects, um, this gives them a roadmap because this gives them time to meet decentralization requirements and gives us a clear kind of roadmap moving forward for how we can begin bringing individuals in, begin bringing investors in and allowing individuals the access to attain uh, kind of the returns of this of these of these startup gains. Now, what this unfortunately means is that for many projects, they are going to put investor requirements on there, such as accredited investor or blah 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 blah. Which means, again, the SEC is going to do everything in its power to kind of tramp down on individual retail investors getting access to those venture capital startup startup capital returns. You know, those one thousand x returns, which seem insane to retail investors, and that's why their eyes roll back in their head when you try to explain that to them. Uh, but the reality is, is that those returns are what venture capital firms are looking for and have always looked for. Why do you think there is so much money that flows into startups? Why do you think you can go to San Francisco right now and pretty much anybody with a good idea is getting several million dollars in funding? Because venture capital firms are looking for yield. They're looking for ROI. They're looking for return. And their return is that 10x, 20x, 100x return. That's normal to them. That's what they're aiming for. That's what their business model is based around. That's what their model is based around. So I think this is groundbreaking. Obviously, this isn't approved yet. This is still going to be discussed. This is still going to be, you know, potentially controversial. But if approved, I think this gives altcoin projects a massive, massive leg forward and could really open the floodgates into investment in current projects because that's basically that's basically a carte blanche for you to launch a startup project as long as you follow the rules and that you have a clear kind of road you have a clear roadmap to get to where you're not considered a security now this takes so much stress so much strain off currently existing projects and projects that are considering launching in the near future so i mean fantastic idea from uh from crypto mom over here I fully support it. I think it's awesome. Let me know your guys' thoughts and comments in the section down below. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be against this. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be for this. But please, uh, let me know what you guys think. Again, down in the comment section down below, we'll pick a random commenter for tomorrow's crypto comment giveaway. And with that being said, I do want to thank today's 
crypto comment giveaway sponsor Spectre Security Coin. Security is more important than ever in today's digital world, so make sure that you guys are following best practice, keeping yourself safe, operating behind a VPN, storing your password securely, using a hardware wallet for your cold storage, for your long-term funds. Make sure that you don't wake up one day like Peter Schiff. And if you want to make sure that you never get shift, yes, that's right, we invented a verb, make sure to go ask my friends over at Spectre Security for a one-on-one -on -one consultation to make sure that you guys are up to date on your security. With that being said, I want to thank them for for sponsoring today's giveaway where we pick a random YouTube commenter to win 8,000 XSPC and Mr. Wendy, you are the big winner again. Congratulations, my friend. Get a hold of me in the Discord. You know the drill and I will tip you some crypto, my friend. And we do this every single day. Simply leave a comment in the section down below. You do have to wait until the show's over on YouTube. So don't go anywhere after the stream ending soon and you can leave your comment down below. Please, I always love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions and I will try to respond to you within the next 24 to 48 hours. With that being said, with that being said, uh, yeah, make sure to go, uh, make sure to, to go over to crackingcryptocurrency.com forward slash giveaway, enter for a chance to win a free t-shirt, throwing around some merch, ladies and gentlemen. Again, next week, we are going to be giving away one month of free access. And of course, we have the free Discord tutorial on the website in the blog section and the Discord uh, tutorial on YouTube as well. Make sure not to sleep on that. You can just go to yt.crackingcryptocurrency.com. Oh, look, we're live now. Uh, and you can just go to videos over here, uh, and it's going to be right here, the Cracking Cryptocurrency Premium Trading Group tutorial from Crypto Jack. Fantastic job on this. Full walkthrough of how to utilize our Discord. Uh, if you guys would like a preview of what the signal delivery system looks like as well, and just a very helpful walkthrough on how to use Discord, it's all here. Here's a preview of the signal. Uh, signal delivery system right here. With that being said, I'd like to get to today's question and answer section. All right. Take a drink of this water. All right. Wendy, you're spending too much time over at Wall Street Bets, my friend. Let's throw some lemons in the basket. Interesting. Doesn't want to let me. Oh, I know why. <laughs> okay. All right, first question of the day. Let's make sure we see here. I think we need to start off with Dubitat Ebrius. Did he ask a question? Or did he just throw some tendies? Oh, okay. He just says, uh, thank you for the 10 pounds, my brother. He says, wow, what a week. Thanks, Justin. Keep up the amazing work. Thank you so much, Dubitat. And then we've got Eli back. Thank you so much for the $5, my brother. He says, hey, buddy, bull pennant forming on the daily for Dash. So if we were going to be forming a pennant, I would argue no. Hmm. 
Uh, well, if we are, then you've got a nice re-add area. I mean, you definitely don't have a trade on your hands right now. You've got a nice re-add area right down here. Right around 99.45, which means if you're trading the pennant, you're looking for a 15% correction. Uh, I mean, Dash having a huge run to the upside, filling this, uh, filling this market void. One lower high, one lower high. Uh, let's see. Symmetrical formation is typically... Uh, is typically biased to the previous direction that the market was moving, but at this point in time, you would need a daily close. Again, this is going to be for the pennant formation. You need a daily close right now above 123 uh, to be looking for that kind of breakout trade. And this has, again, just doing, you know, kind of pennant anatomy here. This has a lot of time to maturation, man, a lot of TTM. So I think there's better opportunities out there. Doesn't look fantastic to me. Uh, looking at the algo on it. Yep. And you can see here we violated we violated the baseline right over here. This put us in for our short trade on this signal. We actually flipped bearish on this candle. A little bit of a correction. A little bit of a correction. Uh, but we're going to be looking for a re-entry for a trending short at 114.20. 114.20. Now moving to the weekly. Now we don't really have enough data here for the weekly. We don't have enough data here for the weekly. Yeah, water volumes completely fallen off. Minx called the top appropriately over here. We've got some weak bearish div right here, type B bearish div. And yeah, I'd say if dash drops below the zero line here, I would be out. We are still in bullish territory in Minx. We are still in bullish territory on Minx. So if you want to be aggressive, you could be looking for dips on this, but. I do not kind of like the look on Dash here. I'd want to see, if anything, I would want to see that close above, what did I say, 123? 123 for Dash. And you could be looking for breakout continuation. Yep, you can see it right there. Selling initiation, right where it came in at. Yeah, right at 123, 94, 123, 124. Yep, daily close above resistance would be a nice breakage. Yeah, otherwise you've kind of got your clear re-add area right here. So you're looking for a breakout to the upside or you're looking to get in cheap on swing dips down to the bottom of the range. If you're aggressive, 109 might not be bad. You've got your daily 21 coming in right there. I mean, everything's sticking straight up. Uh, otherwise, yeah, then you're kind of defaulting down to your 55 around 89 right now. That's going to rise up. So maybe you use your 55 as your lower bottom of the range and this previous accumulation level, this level of demand currently right now. So currently looking for a reaccumulation range between 90 and 99. You're looking to get in cheap and buy dips in a bull market or a breakout of about 124. Uh, in between then, I would say you're largely in a no trade zone unless you want to do lower time frame, maybe range trading on the four hour time frame. And on the four hour time frame, I would say that we had a nice tap up of resistance right here. And unless I get some kind of clear signal, let's take a gander here. Taking breaking Bitcoin off and just utilizing. Yeah, uh, even with um, bottom feeder called it great here. Bottom feeder called it great here. Bottom feeder called it great here. Losing trade on bottom feeder. Bottom feeder called it great here. Um, Yeah, we just broke below the zero line on the four hour. That would be a bearish initiation. And WADA isn't quite there yet on the bearish volume, but falling volume is bearish. So I think we've got that pretty clear level where we want to get back above. And I think we would be bearish to the bottom of the range until then. Uh, Caprica, hey chaps. Are you using... Heikinashi to exit on Bollinger Band indicator 
or perhaps, oh, or the breaking Bitcoin indicator, or perhaps the bottom feeder. I, I am not. I'm using it, uh, my own exit strategy. Mbate took Tezos at $1.20, waiting for a reversal to add more. Keep waiting, or should I grab more now? And buckle up for the ride. Um, let's check out Tezos, man. All right, so you bought Tezos at $1.20. You golden god, do you? So your cost basis is $1.20. Cost basis is $1.20. Re-add at 192, and if not then, 178. Let's get a little, let's, let's dial those in a little bit better. Let's dial those in a little bit better. <clears throat> Yeah, that's right where the baseline's at. So looking for a reversal baseline bounce to come down to about 178 is going to serve you really well. I assume we're going to actually creep up here toward the middle of this. So again, 192 to 178, I think, is not crazy looking at the levels of the baseline. Um, let's see your bottom feeder nailed Tezos bottoms here and here. Beautiful trades. Um, waiting for Minx to kind of go below the zero line here. We had a beautiful... Uh, Alex style topping above zero right here, catching this reversal beautifully. Alex would have nailed this one. Um, yeah, you got a big market inefficiency right there too, man. Look at that low volume node. And 192, 178 would be a beautiful pullback. Now, we kind of already saw that. We already saw, kind of saw the retap of that, but not a real full fill. Otherwise, if you want to be really aggressive, I mean, you do have shallow right here between 203 and 210. Yeah, other than that, man. And we're also making 80, you know, all-time highs. And when something's making an all-time high, you kind of are biased that it's just going to continue doing such a thing. Calling tops and bottoms is a fool's errand. <laughs> Actually, that's not true. We can call bottoms now really good. We have bottom feeder. Let's see here. One, two, three... Uh, you know, I want to see, you know, if, if I want to call for a significant retrace, I want to see Minx cross below zero. That's the initiation signal that I look for. Let's see what time transformation is doing. I bet time transformation is going bonkers. And got the exit signal here and still in the OB territory. No bearish div, though. No bearish div, so just acceleration. Yeah, I laid out the levels, man. That's what I feel confident with. I never want to buy tops, even if it goes up another 100%. If you feel really aggressive about it, you know, buy 10% of what you want to buy here, and then set your limit bids lower. You'll get a chance to get them filled, man. Patience. Rewards go to the patient. What volume node indicator do I use? Sasha Bozio asks. Uh, I use uh, VPVR and VPSV. I looked at Litecoin for Wayne Arndt. Darren Garish wants to take... Uh, take a look at Metal. Spanks Mang. Metal Pay. Yeah, Minx aggressively called the top on this one right here. Uh, and Minx is also recovering from the oversold area, which is a pretty significant sell signal. Now, time transformation isn't quite there yet. Time transformation has a bit more of a ways to go. 
uh, until we reach the overbought level and we get the sell signal on the daily and we can see uh, we can just see here how well time transformation has caught the tops on dollar pairs caught the top here and it caught the top over here caught the bottom here uh, and that's really the only signals that we got from time transformation except for hidden bullish divergence here and hidden bearish divergence there which led us to a little bit of a surge down to the to the downside uh, you know overall the trending indicator is bullish uh, we've got a pullback node at 0 0.2977 uh, it's where we'd like to see pullbacks. More significant pullbacks are going to come to 0 0.273. Um, looking for continuation on the daily. Well, we had the initial entry. We had the initial re-entry here. So we would have already taken 50% profit. We'd, we would have a trailing stop loss on right now. Trailing stop loss would be sitting right at 273. So basically right on our re-add. So if our trailing stop loss gets hit, potentially we'd be looking at that area to re-add on metal. Yeah, time transformation not there. Not yet calling for a top. Minx being a little bit more aggressive with it. You know, again, take a little profit, my friend. Move that stop loss up to break even and let these babies run, man. Let these babies run. And if it comes down, hit your stop loss. Cool. You look to aggressively re-enter on the very next buy signal. Whether that's Minx giving you the re-entry signal, whether that's time transformation giving you the re-entry signal. Uh, let's take a look at the four hour here. Got some nice consolidation after a good sell off. Lower high. Higher low and forming a symmetrical pattern right here. Volume is telling you to stay out of this. So we're basically looking for the next significant breakout here on the four hour, right? Just, just going in whichever way the volume decides to go. Haven't broken the trending indicator to the downside. Uh, that could happen very soon though, because we are teasing at it. I mean, we are basically right there. If we close below 33405, then the four hour will go ahead and give us the flip to the downside. Uh, we are bearish below the baseline on the four hour, uh, which means we kind of want to be hedged or looking to exit our positions, but it's not signaling for a short yet. Minx hasn't crossed below the zero line in time transformation, just kind of faffing about there at the zero line as well. Uh, four, uh, four hour time transformation calling the top even better over here. Um, so yeah, I, I think this looks like, this kind of looks like a sell. This looks like a sell and patiently waiting for the next signal. Either again, that kind of pre pre if we get kind of a market correction, cool. Otherwise, it looks like we kind of want to get a uh, a breakout to the upside here, man. Caprica says after he has finished his forex algo, I will start back testing non forex assets. Do I ultimately conclude that utilizing a baseline is the way to go on supply and demand assets? Thanks for any help. I do. Yeah, I do. I've seen systems run well without them. I've seen systems run well with them. Honestly, in my personal opinion, I think that no matter what asset class that you're trading, you want to run a baseline for at least your first year until you kind of develop those discretionary notes to help you build a discretionary rules-based system, or you begin kind of taking it off. Sometimes on some assets, a baseline can be kind of like training wheels because it just gives you more, more rules. And depending on it, right, depending on it, depending on the baseline that you're using, it can be aggressive, right? Like my baseline can kind of be aggressive, right? But I like that. I like that, right? Because crypto is so volatile, I save far more money on being wrong than not having something that's there to tell me that I'm wrong quick enough. So always, I think always start with, I, I think always start with the baseline. Uh, Ken Master ist. Ken Master ist. Says, is this, the, is this the beginning of a bull run in alt season or are we still in a bear market? Great live stream. Thank you, man. I highly appreciate it. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, I think it is. I think we're going to have, listen, I think we're entering into a bullish season. I think we've been in a bullish season on Bitcoin for a while, at least on the weekly time frame. I think a lot of altcoins are beginning to break into bullish territory. I think we're seeing a lot of excitement and pumps right now. I think we're going to be doing for, I think we're due fairly soon for somewhat of a market correction. I think it's going to shake a lot of individuals the bottom at the top out. I think we're getting a lot of late leverage longs right now, particularly on Bitcoin. I think they're likely to be punished. I think that, uh, you know, I'm seeing it on YouTube. I'm seeing it in Twitter. These, you know, these kind of morons who say that they're traders who are like, yeah, man, this is the top short pump. Oh, no, this is the top short pump. No, no, man, this is the top short 
pump. I, I honestly don't know how these guys have subscribers. But anyways, my point is, is that they're starting to be like, it's bull season, man. And so that tends to kind of say to me like, Ooh, okay, we, they're probably going to get punished, right? Because that's what happens to bad traders. Um, but I don't want people to get freaked out about that. If we wake up tomorrow and everything's down 20 or 30%, I pullbacks are good right now. Pullbacks are good. Um, and if that changes on the weekly time frame, hey, you know, uh, I, listen, this is crypto, man. And the last time that we saw things like this in crypto was in 2019 and most and most things ran a huge percentage, huge percentage. So the upside is far greater than the downside. Right now, I'm not a moon boy. If my out, if my system tells me that I should be bearish, then I'll be bearish. Right. And I'll come back and I'll be here and I'll be like, all right, guys, sorry, we were wrong next time, next time. Right. But you know what I mean? Like, think, you know, do you guys remember 2017, 2018? Right. Do you guys remember Q2 2019? Let's do this. Let's do this, man. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, we got some uh, questions for quick looks, quick looks, guys, quick looks. Uh, Crow USD. Crow USD on the daily. Pro USD on the daily looks healthy. Um, uh, you know, time transformation is is kind of insanely overbought, uh, but we also are not getting an exit signal right now on time transformation. So I think you know, kind of the kind of the first sell off time transformation is going to be like, oh, sell because it's sensitive. But uh, overall, it looks pretty good, man. Uh, coming out of the four hour chart, coming out of the four hour chart, we're, start, we're starting to get a little bit of chop. Four hour system did signal for an exit, and volumes died off. So again, I would take profit on this trader right now. Triple sell signals on the four hour time frame right here. Uh, I'd be a little wary of that. Crow looks like a sell right now, and then we'll take the next momentum movement to the upside when Wada Tar Explosion, which by the way, you guys can add to your chart for free. It's right on Trading View. Just search for CC Wada Tar Explosion. Uh, take the next signal the Wada Tar gives you, my friend. Uh, but a lot of these look like profit taking opportunities right now. Uh, Link USDT. Or I'll look at Link USD on the daily. You know, hey, listen, I'm just going to say this one time, right? Last night I took uh, Win and Perlin and um, what's that other coin that I took last night? It's literally right there. And, and Coast, Cosine. And Perlin now up 32.36%. Um, but the other coin on my watch list was Link. And I was going to go long on Link yesterday, but it just didn't fit into my risk profile. And so again, again, now, you know, I, I, I'm aware of all these coins, but don't do what I do, guys. What you don't want to do is if you, well, so really this doesn't matter. I just didn't take the trade. So I have no upside or downside in here. I do hold some link long term, um, but I didn't, I didn't take the long trade yesterday, but honestly, or obviously link a fantastic trade. So since I was looking at an entry on yesterday's candle, anyways, uh, this would be, I would already have hit and take profit one. My stop loss would be aggressively at break even, uh, and one more positive candle close. I'd set a trailing stop loss for the bottom of the last candle. So Link looks good, man. Link looks good. Let's see if we can get some continuation. The Moon Boys favorite, the old stinky Linky. And looking at Verge, I'm going to look at Verge on the dollar over here on Bitfinex. Uh, Verge, again, looking like a lot of the kind of uh, coins that had a nice bullish move to the upside. I think that Verge is not as strong. I don't think that Verge is a very strong coin. I don't like Verge. I would never hold Verge. Um, doesn't mean it won't pump. Again, anything can pump. Uh, but it just does not look very strong, uh, similarly to the other coins. Again, time transformation in the overbought territory on this one. Minx in the overbought territory and crossing to the downside. Big sell pressure on XVG USD today. Again, I think we're going to see about half of the altcoin market correct over the weekend. And I think we're going to see the other half rip our faces off. So look for the ones that have ripped our faces off. Verge has already done some face ripping here, man. Take those profits. Go find something to rip faces. TM. Put that on a t-shirt. Uh, and then, sorry, one last question was uh, Skater Ducky uh, says, uh, do I know how to make bots? I want to make a BitMEX bot to automate my trading and advice, any advice that I can give. Sure, man, there's some fantastic resources out there. Uh, you know, what we're working on right now is building a platform that will uh, that will allow you in the, if you're a member uh, or if you're a subscriber, what we're doing is working on building a platform where you can come and plug in any strategy that you want and it can be managed by our system with our advanced risk management system, with our advanced position sizing system, with our ability to manage risk, to do cross-platform exchange 
exchange uh, to do cross exchange uh, platforming to do lots of advanced stuff that individuals uh, that it takes years honestly to learn and build. Um, you know the world of botting is is, is tricky, and I and, and I encourage anybody to kind of get into that. That's what we're actively working on right now, and making that available as a service. That's going to be available very soon. But in the meantime, definitely make sure to come check out what we're doing in the group because what we are going to be doing is offering that service as far as the trades that we're taking and the performance that we're getting. Obviously, some of which you can see. Is it over here? It's right here. Yeah, it's right there. Um, but there are some pretty neat resources out there as well. Um, I am not, uh, I'm a strategy builder. Uh, I'm a strategy builder. I am not a botter. So I have amassed the team to do that for us. And we're going to be doing that and offering that as services to our, to our members. Um, as far as places to start, um, I mean, you just do some trolling on GitHub, man. You know, you can find all kinds of like market maker bots on there that you can kind of deconstruct and put together. Uh, and I'm sure, listen, in our discord, there are thousands of individuals that are motivated and passionate just just ask around in our discord and i am more than certain that there's going to be somebody who can help you out my friend i get messages all the time about stuff that put me on the things just by being in my discord server that i would have never come across that's what i love about our community it's 110 guys where are you guys at no stinky twinkies man Trading wheels are good in crypto. OXT might be one of those weekend coins I'm talking about, Justin. Says agency. You guys heard it here. Let's go, baby. Let's go. What's that? Let's look at that. See, that's what I'm talking about right there. Look at that coiling, baby. Look at that. Minx just crossing above the zero line. Wada Tar looking healthy. Time transformation giving you the alley-oop right here. Hmm. Nice spring right here. Let's see, that even hasn't, that has, Orchid hasn't even started ripping faces off yet, guys. Come on. Mar Champa saying, if we do get to link, just noticing Minx Cross under calling tops very nicely on the daily. Ricky T says those other people are content creators, not traders, and they herd sheep. Indeed. The great FOMO of 2017. Jurgen Ernst says this time around will be better and I am better prepared. You know, that's a big thing that I've been thinking about lately and I've been talking about is, you know, I know a lot of you guys are around from 2017, okay? And I know that a lot of people watching this show didn't handle 2017 and 2018 the way that they want. And you guys who have been with me for the last three years have put in the work to be prepared this time around. You guys knew it would come and it might be here. Now, as I said at the beginning of the show, now is the time to be disciplined, to put everything that we've done in theory, that we've done in the markets, in less optimum conditions, into practice so that we can make 2020, great again, baby. West Texas, what's going on with WTI today? Um, I want the CFD on Awanda. No. Uh, 4x.com, I guess, will work. Um... WTI crude, CFD on Awanda. On the daily? Ugh. I mean, I have a mind to look for continuation shorts on this, but we just got the exit signal for shorts on yesterday. We are getting purple dot continuation confirmation. Now, WADA is going ahead and giving us another rising explosion level and the signals of the upside, but again, excuse me, I'm sorry, guys, I'm sorry. With time transformation recovering from overbought, uh, as well as Minx over here recovering from overbought, I need to see a Minx cross under to take this down. I need to see a little bit. I need to see a little bit better. And, and that might mean I missed that continuation short on West Texas. It might mean I missed that continuation short on West Texas, but 
Yeah. If you take the continuation short, take that at half risk. You've got invalidation at 51,756. Oh, I got to do the chest. Thanks, guys, for reminding me. Let's do it. How do I establish my stops? Do I have a method? Yep, I've created a, an indicator. Tells you exactly what to do. <laughs> F says, I wish I was in the crypto space since 2017. I'm in since 2018. Don't worry, man. One day, all your friends will look back and say, Hey! You can introduce yourself as, hey, I bought crypto in 2020. And everybody's going to be like, hey, what's up? How you doing? No problem, agency. DIY guy says he's here for the tech. <laughs> I'm here for the tech, man. How'd the DLive giveaway go? Uh, giving away 53.8 lemons today. Uh, Ricky T, Wendy 2, uh, Midwest Attempt, Sanic Fest, and F1. Big wins for the day, my friends. Thank you, Jason, for the subscription. I can feel it pumping in the air tonight. Oh, Lord. Oh, I just forgot it. I've been waiting for this moment for all of my life. Do 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 ch ch. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for joining me for another exciting episode of Breaking Bitcoin. This is your daily source for market updates, sentiment, and news for traders. If you enjoy the content, if you enjoy the show, my team works hard to put this here for you. Make sure to show them your love by subscribing to the channel here on YouTube. If you have not already, hit that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. Really does help us out. Every single person helps. Uh, if you're over there on Twitch or DLive, make sure to give us a follow and consider using your Amazon Prime for a free sub on Twitch if you have not already, my friends. Helps me do. Helps me helps me, helps me, helps me give back to the people who put so much into this show. You guys are awesome. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, sarcastic remarks, or death threats, leave them in the comment section down below. I'll do my best to get back to you. Make sure to watch for tonight's Breaking Bitcoin Bit, dropping at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, as always. Uh, we've got a lot going on this weekend in the Premium Group. Make sure to join us tomorrow evening in the Movie Night Voice Channel for movie night. We're going to be watching Contagion. So get your bottled water, get your MREs and your emergency kit supplies and join us as we celebrate the zombie Corona apocalypse with Contagion, guys. Um, <laughs> uh, of course, make sure to join us in the Discord. There are links down below for anything you guys could possibly need. And if you guys would like to join us in your path toward consistently profitable trading, make sure to check out our services at premium.crackingcryptocurrency. Dot com. My name is Justin. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. Be excellent to one another and trade safely. I'll see you guys back here on Monday, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time for another episode of Breaking Bitcoin.